I'm going to show you how I made this image today. This is one of my own flower images. I'm going to show you every step along the way. You're going to learn a lot of different uh, techniques here today. So stay tuned and let's get started. Uh, let's come over to the layer stack here. You'll notice I'm using uh, four different layers plus a digital frame. Um, we start out, we're using AI Remix. Then we go to impression from there. And then we add a texture filter, and then we do a little HSL color tuning just to tweak up the image for the final result. And then I added a digital frame. If we have enough time, I'll show you how I add the digital frame. But let me go ahead and delete all of these layers. This is the scary part, guys, and I, hopefully I have good notes here. And because I always have to make these images in advance, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the digital frame. I'm going to delete the next filter. And you'll see the progress as I delete down through here. I'm just clicking on the trash can here, and I'm going to delete the AI Remix filter right here. All right, now we start from scratch. Okay, let's come up to Add Filter. Let's go to AI Remix, and I'm going to go to the search uh, icon right here, give it a click, and type in the name of the uh, preset I used, and it was called Back Road uh, Bliss. And I just typed back there, but... No, yeah, that's it. Back Road Bliss. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And there's Back Road Bliss. And let's see. I changed the uh, blend mode to soft light. I know right now you're thinking, man, that looks horrible. But don't be afraid when you click on these presets. You're going to get some presets that look horrible. But try your blending modes. And that's what I did. I went down through and went through different blending modes here. You know, and I thought, We'll find one that may work for us. And the one I found that worked was Soft Light. This one right here. See, it looks better already. So let's click on Soft Light. And let me see what else I did to this. I kept the style strength and low. Now you have different style strengths. You can go low, you can go medium, and you can see the results. They get a little more defined. I'll go into high here. High takes a little longer to process, okay? But I use low. I used low, and then the only other thing I did was took the saturation and bumped up the saturation to like around a 144. Let's see if I can find it. There's 144 right there. So I just brought up the saturation. So that's the first step. And now are you ready to take step two? So we're going to go to add filter and now the impression filter. To me, I like to use these two filters together. A lot of times the, uh, the uh, AI remix and the impression filter. And right away, that just by clicking that, that looks good right out of the gate. Now, I didn't do a whole lot in here. I kept the uh, stroke at type 1. I kept the opacity uh, the full way up at 1. I kept the blend mode to normal. And... Um, Let's see, I kept my strokes, not on medium, I switched my strokes up to high. So I changed the strokes. A little more definition in there. And what else did I do here? And the only other thing I did was I went to the layer mask and got myself a brush and changed my transparency to some gray tone, like right around in here somewhere. I'll experiment. And that brush size is good right there. Uh, radius is at the 0.30 and softness is at 50. Edgeware is turned on. And all I did was remove some of the painterly effect from the center of the flower right here. Just to bring back a little bit of detail. And what I might do is actually pull that back a little more to the, to the lighter side of things actually. I'm going the wrong way. And just make sure I have some painterly on there. Yeah, something like that. I think that looks good right there. And that's basically all I did in that step. And then I thought, well, you know what? These lighter areas in here and here and here, I thought, and eh, they, they just look like light blobs there. So I thought, let's maybe add some texture to this. I'll see if I can find a texture that'll work. We're now moving on to step number three, and that's the texture filter. So we're going to add a filter. Let's add the texture filter. It's the whole way down at the bottom here. And uh, this is, uh, if you watched my last uh, video, well, actually a couple of videos back on how to import your own textures, I gave you a bunch of free textures, links to those from stock sites, uh, from one stock site in particular, I should say. And so if you go back and watch a couple of videos back how to import textures into uh, Topaz Studio 2, you can get this texture right here. So this texture will be found in, let me see here, let's leave it on all. 
I'm going to go to the category, and it was under the um, stock painterly. And it's this one right here. I didn't give it a name, but it's this texture right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And right out of the gate, that looks pretty nice. It dulls the image up a bit, so we have to change some, th some things here. The main thing I did was went through my different blending modes, you know, and as you hover over these blending modes, again, you're going to see the changes take place, which is really nice. And I settled on linear light. I thought linear light looked the best. And then I took its opacity and it right, it defaults at 50. I just took it back a little bit more, took it to like a 48. And what else did I do here? I took the detail and I bumped the detail to the left. So I took a little bit of that detail out. Now this has a really nice canvas background in here, which really adds to the painterly look of this image. So I'm going to take the detail and pull it back to like a minus 0.22 right there. Just, you know, just to ease off that detail a little bit. And then the only other thing I did here was change the saturation, but I'm going to wait till we do our next step because that is when I decided I need to do a little bit of a saturation adjustment. So sometimes what you need to do is you need to come back to a filter and then readjust. You know, just because you adjust something one way, you can come back and alter another filter. And every all these filters work in conjunction with one another and they all interact with one another. I, I just love Topaz Studio too, that you can do that. It's really basically a non-destructive workflow, but all the filters will interact with one another. And I always come to this point in my editing process, in this joy of editing process, where I say, you know, what does this image need? What needs to be corrected? And I'm thinking the pinks are oversaturated. Um, and, and I think maybe I can lighten the image up a little bit. So I'm thinking, how can I do that? So I thought, well, let's try an HSL color tuning filter. And I just love the uh, Topaz, I just love Topaz Studio too, because you've got all these really cool filters inside of here. And I'm always using this um, HSL color tuning filter right here because it breaks your colors down, right? It gives you overall saturation, but it breaks a bunch of different colors down. It even, even gives you gray here, which is really cool. But here's what I did inside of here. I, I figured I got to tone the magentas down. So I went and clicked on the magenta swatch right here. And what I did was I took the saturation of the, of the magenta back to like a minus 46, somewhere around in there. Let's put it on a minus 46. If I decide I want to change it, I, I have that artist license. That's a minus 45. I could type in minus 46, but there it is right there. Minus 46. And that's all I really did with magenta. But then I thought my reds are a little bit out of balance with the magentas. So then I figured let's go to the red swatch and let's see what we can do there. So on the red, what I did was I changed its hue to like a minus 39. So I went to the left here to a minus 39. I wanted to get it more into the pinker side of things, so I hue, I use the hue for that, which is cool, right? It, it balances it out better with the other pinks in the image, and that's why I did that. And then I still thought this color in here was a little too strong, because remember, this was where the red was, and now I turned it more into a pink color, but then I took the saturation and I started to ease it back. Actually, a good bit, you know, I was, I was at a minus 60, but which is right here, but maybe I won't quite go to a minus 60. Maybe I'll let a little more pink through, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go to like, say like a fifth. Nah, nah, I'm going to go back a little more 50. How about a 55? I'll split the difference there a little bit. I like that. And then I thought the overall, I thought the overall image may have been a slight bit oversaturated. So I clicked on this um, icon right here, which stands for overall. And I just took the overall saturation back just a tiny wee bit to like a minus 0.06. Just ease it off just a little bit. And then I thought, well, I'd like to lighten the image up a little bit. I want it to be cheerful and happy. So I took the overall lightness and I just used that and took it up to like a, like a 20. Let's see if that's going to be too much. And I kept playing with it. And yeah, I, I do like that. Now let's click this eyeball right here. So here's the before the HSL color and here's the after. But see what a big difference you can get out of just one filter like the HSL color. 
Now, if I think that's a little too light, I might just, you know, ease back on that just a little bit. Let me take it to like a, let's take it to a 15. I think originally I had it at like a, a plus a 0.11. And then after playing around with it, I went to a 0.20. But now I'm thinking 0.15. You know, I'm fickle. Things change in my mind and I'm thinking this looks really good. So I'm really happy with this so far. It looks really good. And actually, I should be happy with it so far because it's actually done. Uh, let me see how much time we have left. And if we have enough time, I'll show you how I add the digital frame. Hold the presses. I'm not done. Remember, I told you I was playing around with the color on the, on the texture. Or no. Was it on the texture? Yeah, it was on the texture. Sorry about that. I had to think. And uh, what I did was, there's some yellow in here. And I wanted to bring that out a little bit more. So I pulled that up. See that when I pulled that texture up? See how that yellow color, if you'll notice right up in this area, starts to come back in? Yeah, Dave, that's why you did that. And I like that little bit of extra yellow in there. And, and what did I take it to? I think I took it to like a 30, somewhere in there. Yeah, let's do a 31. No, let's, let's do a 30. There it is. Now I'm happy. And we do have enough time. Let's go ahead and do the uh, digital frame. I have no notes for the digital frame, but let me see if I can wing it here. So let me go to add filter. Let's find digital frame, which is in the stylistic section here. Let's open that up. And I just use the basic frame here. And uh, what did I do? Uh, frame type. I took, the, took it from texture to color. And see that texture goes away. And then the other thing I did was I clicked on the frame color swatch right here. Got my little color picker tool and I went for like a light pink color. Sampled a light pink color to harmonize everything. Now I thought that's a little too pink so I just took this, went to this color wheel. Now your, your, uh, your color interface may look different depending if you have a Mac or a Windows machine. You'll get some kind of way to alter the color and I thought a color somewhere around there looks really good and I clicked OK. And then I thought there's a little too much shadow around here, for me anyway. You may like that, but I thought for me it's a little too strong. So I went to the shadow strength and it defaults at a 0.50. I just took it to the left a little bit and eased back on that shadow just a little bit right there. And now it's time for the before and after. Now you have two ways of going back to the original. You could come up here on the upper left of the menu and click original. Or the way I like to do it is just... Click down with the left side of my mouse, do a left click and hold it down and you'll see the before. As long as you hold it down, it'll sh keep the before on. So here's the before and here's the after. What do you think? Hey, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments section below. I didn't tell you this at the beginning, but I started out in Photoshop. So if I click accept, I can go right back into Photoshop. Or I could come up here to file if I started out in Topaz Studio too, which I could have done that just as well. Come up to file and save project as. It'll save it as a project with all your layers intact. I just thought I wanted to point that out. Well, there it is. Episode number 13 of the Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. I hope you're enjoying the series. Again, if you have comments or questions, leave, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.